Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're multiplying a polynomial by a monomial. We're gonna take a look at multiplying a bunch of problems and then we're also going to be taking a look at when we use that situation with equations. So first off, multiplying. So it says multiply the coefficients, add the exponents. So when I'm multiplying this monomial of 6x times this polynomial of 3x squared minus four, what we should notice is that we really just have the distributive property going on. And we have to make sure, sure we remember our multiplication properties of exponents, where when I'm multiplying 6x times 3x squared, I need to multiply the 6 times the 3. We multiply our coefficients as normal. But then when I'm multiplying x times x squared, remember we add the exponents. So there's really an exponent of 1 there for the x. So x to the first times x to the second would give me x to the third. And then 6x times negative 4 would be negative 24x. Next one, same idea. We are using the distributive property to multiply this monomial to the entire polynomial inside the parentheses. So now two times three is six. X times X, remember you add the exponents, so that's going to become X to the second. And then the Y squared is just Y squared. Now two X times four Y, well two times four is eight, and then x times y is just simply xy. And I will always strongly encourage you when you can put them in alphabetical order in your answer. Technically, 8yx is also okay, but 8xy, we all put the variables in alphabetical order in our answer, then we're all gonna be on the same page. Next one, same idea, we're using the distributive property. So negative two times negative four is eight x to the third times x would be x to the fourth. Then negative two times eight is negative 16. x to the third times x to the fourth is x to the seventh. Now remember here, there's really a coefficient of one. So one times negative three is negative three. x to the third times x to the fourth we know is x to the seventh. y times y is y to the second. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. x to the third times x squared would be x to the fifth. And then I have a y here, so I need to make sure I multiply that y into my answer. Let's take a look at some additional practice. So if you wanted to right now, you could totally pause the screen, copy down these problems, and see if you can do it on your own. Otherwise, just continue to follow along with me. So again, it's just a lot more distributive property. So 2 times negative 7 is negative 14 x times x to the second would be x to the third. Two times negative four is negative eight. x times x is x to the second. Mind your p's and q's. So ready, six times three is 18. p times p squared is p to the third. And then don't forget about that q that we're also multiplying here. So there's q at the end. Plus six times four is 24. p is just not getting multiplied by another p, but I have p there. And then q times q is q squared. Same thing here, I'm using my distributive property. So five times three is 15. j times j is j squared. k times k is k squared. And then five times two is 10. j is not getting multiplied by another j. k times k is k squared. So this one half X is gonna get multiplied to all three terms here. <clears throat> so one half times eight is four. X times X squared is X to the third. One half times, remember there's really a one here. So that's saying one half times one is just a half. And then X times X is X squared. So it's one half X squared. And then one half times negative seven is negative seven halves, or you can call it negative 3.5. And then I still have an X I'm multiplying, and so I have X at the end. Okay, two more problems like this. Now, these are following the same ideas, but just a little bit more complicated because we are distributing uh, more than once, and then we have to combine our like terms. So let's take a look. So 6X times 2X. So 6 times 2 is 12. X times X is X squared. 6x times negative 3 would be negative 18x. 
Now I have to carefully distribute my negative 5. So negative 5 times 2x squared becomes negative 10x squared. Negative 5 times 9x becomes negative 45x. And then negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. Now, the way we put this together and we combine our like terms, what we're going to notice, we always combine them in order from the highest exponent to the lowest. We learned in a previous lesson about standard form. Standard form of a polynomial is when the degrees are in highest to uh, least order. So we're going to combine our highest exponents first. So 12x squared minus 10x squared is 2x squared. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the ones with just x. So negative 18x negative 45x. When I combine those two terms, I get negative 63x. And then my positive 15 just hangs it at the end. And notice this is now in standard form. It's the highest exponent of 2, next exponent of, next exponent of 1. And then if I don't see an x, it means it really has an exponent of 0. Okay, last one like this. So a bunch of three sets of distributing going on here. So we just have to be extra careful. Okay, so negative 3g times 7g would be negative 21g squared. Negative 3g times negative 2 would be positive 6g. 3 times g squared is 3g squared. 3 times 2g is 6g. 3 times 1 is 3. Now I have to distribute my negative 3g. Negative 3g times negative 5g would be positive 5g squared. Negative 3g times 3 would be negative 9g. So now I want to combine these to the high, with the, starting with my highest exponent. So negative 21g squared, positive 3g squared, uh, 15g squared. So negative 21 plus 3 is negative 18. Negative 18 plus 15 is negative 3. So it's negative 3g squared. Now let's take a look at g. So 6g, 6g negative 9g. So 6 plus 6 is 12. 12 minus 9 is 3. So this is going to be plus 3g. And then I have my plus 3 at the end. So it's negative 3g squared plus 3g plus 3. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at how we then use this when we, were, we are solving equations. So if I have this equation here, x times x plus 3 equals x squared minus 6, I'm going to, of course, use my distributive property. And so x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Now, I should notice that when I want to solve an equation, I have to get rid of like terms on either side. So notice that I have an exponent of 2 on both sides. And notice they're actually both x squared. So if I was to, let's say, start solving this equation and I subtract x squared from the left and x squared from the right, notice what's going to happen here. My x squareds are actually gone now. And so I'm left with just 3x equals 6, which is just 2, a really nice basic equation. So we're using our multiplication properties of exponents. We are then um, realizing if I have x squared on the same side, on both sides of the equation, if I subtract it out, they're completely gone. And I'm left with something really friendly to solve. So now next one, 2x times 3x, and then 2x times negative 3. So 2x times 3x would be 6x squared, and then minus 6x, and then equals 6x squared minus 12. So then I'm looking at this to solve it, and I say to myself, okay, well, let me get rid of this 6x squared, but notice it's actually the same on both sides. So again, a very nice problem. The x squareds are now completely gone. I'm left with negative 6x equals negative 12. And when I go to solve, I get x equals 2. And just a coincidence that it's also x equals 2 like the previous problem. If you want to pause and try this equation out on your own, please go for it. Otherwise, just follow along. So we're going to be distributing the 5. Notice I'm not going to distribute the 5 to the 3 because the 3 is not in parentheses. And then I have to distribute this 3 here. So 5 times t squared is 5t squared. 5 times 2t is 10t. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And then I bring down my plus 3 equals 5t squared. 3 times 3t is 9t. 3 times 2 is 6. So now I can clean this up first, or I can start subtracting things on either side first. It doesn't matter. 
Um, I notice that there's 5t squared on both sides of my equation, so look what happens if I subtract those both out. They are now completely gone. And I might as well clean this up as I go. So 10t, then I have a negative 5 plus 3. So negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Okay, so I'm left with 10t minus 2 equals 9t plus 6. And then I can go ahead, subtract 9t, add 2, and I end up getting t equals 8. Okay, last one like this. So x times x, and then x times negative 5, and then I have to do x times x, and then x times 2. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Bring down the plus 8x. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Bring down the minus 4. I notice I have x squared on both sides of my equation, so I can go ahead and subtract those out on both sides which is nice because now it's completely gone. I'm left with now negative 5x plus 8x, which combines to get 3x. Subtract 2x on both sides, and I end up getting x equals negative 4, and I have my answer. Now, if you are looking for a little bit of an extra challenge, I have these wheels for you. So if you want to pause right now and copy down the way this wheel looks, you can go ahead and do that. And then in the middle of the wheel, you're going to write 2x plus 3y. So if you want to copy this down right now, go for it. Otherwise, just keep pressing, just keep on going on. And so now what you're going to do, and you should time yourself and see how quickly you can do it, is you are going to multiply this binomial by each one of these monomials. And as you multiply it by this monomial, you're going to write the answer outside of the wheel. So I'll do the first one for you. So 2x plus 3y times 10. So 10 times 2x is 20x, and then you have to do 10 times 3y. 10 times 3y is 30y, and so that's the first part of the answer. Then you're going to go around and do the next one. So you would do x cubed times 2x, x cubed times 3y, and write your answer. So if you want to try this out, go ahead and press pause and fill in around the wheel. Okay, let's take a look. So if I multiply 2x plus 3y times x cubed, it would be this, 2x to the fourth plus 3x cubed y. 5y would become 10xy plus 15y squared. Next one, 4x cubed plus 6xy, 6, 6x squared y. Let's multiply by xy, so this one would become 2x squared y plus 3xy squared. Then we have negative 6xy minus 9y squared. Two more. 2x cubed y plus 3x squared y squared. And then the last one, negative 8x squared minus 12xy. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching.